Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Femi, Femi Olavi, and I'd like to say Happy International Men's Day. If you can hear me, our Q&A tab is opened and would like to hear from you so you can drop your message, say hello, say hi, and we'll be sure to also respond to you. Once again, Happy International Men's Day. In 44 countries of the world, International Men's Day is an annual international event celebrated on the 19th of November. The objectives of this celebration are set out in the six pillars of International Men's Day. These objectives are to promote positive role models, to celebrate men's positive contribution, to also focus on men's health and well-being. You know, they say that health is wealth. To also highlight discrimination against males and to improve gender relations and gender equality. And to also create a safer and better world. As part of the activities lined up to mark this year's celebration, Heritage Bank has put together a fourth day virtual seminar with our theme bordering on planning for the future. Plan for the future. There is no better way to start off this conversation about securing the future through finance and investment. To start off this conversation is Victor. Victor Amakwe. I'd like to read the profile of Victor so that we can we can see that it comes with so much experience, especially when it comes to finance. Victor Amaku is a wealth management professional who has been practicing for the past 16 years. He is currently the head, group head of private wealth management group at Heritage Bank. Victor relocated to Nigeria to help to create private wealth unit of Heritage Bank after completing a 10-year stint at Fidelity Investment as Vice President, Senior Institutional Advisor. He also has a Bachelor's in Finance from the University of Texas at Arlington and an MBA from the University of Maryland, Robert Smith School of Business, as well as various licenses in the United States to practice. At this time, I'd like to hand over to Victor, who will be taking us through today's conversation on securing your tomorrow through finance and investment. Victor, over to you now. Fermi, good morning, and thank you again for the uh, introduction. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, again, I'm Victor uh, Amakwe, my, uh, and I'm the group head of uh, private wealth management. Uh, here at Heritage. Uh, my primary function uh, is basically helping uh, individuals plan for the future and also and also to uh, um, help them manage what they have now to plan you know to plan for the future which is basically the theme of uh, 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 the, our topic for today really planning for what tomorrow uh, what tomorrow is even though we don't uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds but it's always a good idea to plan ahead uh, because uh, you know that saying um, if you plan if you fail to plan you're planning to fail right um, and if you if you look at most uh, successful individuals of uh, the people that we always uh, look up to uh, as role models and uh, and uh, people of the like, the one thing uh, that uh, that uh, ev every one of them have uh, in uh, in common is that um, their life is usually is usually regimented to an extent and is planned. Uh, so when you look at it from a from a, uh, a ten thousand feet view, you see uh, a trajectory usually a straight line up or down, right? But when you begin to take a closer look, a very close look into it, you then notice that there's a, that, that is, the line is always zigzag, 
which is basically the story of life, right? That things go up, things go down, but having the plan to 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 basically, uh, uh, what in statistics you say, small, uh, you know, smoothing the uh, curve and making the standard deviation a lot more tighter is uh, basically what uh, what uh, that the whole planning thing is in general. Um, and <clears throat> to be clear, um, even though my job entails dealing with people with a certain amount of uh, uh, wealth. The truth about the matter is, regardless where you are in life, um, you always um, uh, plan. Um, we always have to have a plan, right? Um, you know, when you're finishing uh, school, you know, um, the, your plan could be there's, there's always a sh short term, medium term, and long term plan. Um, it's, it's just that it becomes as you get older, plan changes and uh, and uh, and then as the plan changes, you know, the, the techniques to go around it also changes. But at the end of the day, most most people, if, if not everybody, always has the same set of, uh, uh, you know, the same set of uh, questions, goals. Everybody wants to succeed. Uh, in life, that's 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 a you know that's a start. Now, success is um, success is uh, relatively subjective. Uh, in what we all agree that fi you know financial capabilities is uh, is a good place to start. However, that's other things that go into uh, to success. So if we if we just you know let me take a, a step back. <clears throat> And just go through uh, what I believe, and uh, and and my years of practicing, you know, um, the main uh, the main themes of most of the conversations that I have with various people. Like I said, I was various people of different ages, uh, and then I'll go into you know how the earning potential and things of, of that nature works. Um, so if if we if we go into basically what the client needs in all my uh, meetings it's, it's pretty much the same set of things um if you're still in the workforce is uh to, to be sure that how to be sure that i can support myself and my family at retirement um and and the reason in there is uh, pretty straightforward um if you look at the trajectory of how the earning potential is for practically most people is the older you get uh, the, the more intelligent you are as an individual, um, um, the more wisdom you have and skill and things of that nature. So, and with that uh, comes a lot more responsibility intellectually and hence more money. So as, as you get closer to retirement, you tend to earn more. Um, but, the, but the trick is uh, being able to start savings from, from a much earlier age because uh, because uh, even though you're earning more you're saving more but you're not given you're not given enough time to sweat what you're uh, saving right before retirement so the question that clients always ask uh, at the time is you know am i am i saving enough for retirement uh, and then you then have to then start uh, you know doing analysis to, f to find out at retirement what your you know what your potential needs will be um, basically being old. Uh, the, you know, the other part of, um, the other part of um, questions that, that usually come up in meetings is what happens if, if, uh, if, if I go through a sudden misfortune, i.e. I die, I get disabled, I get run over by a truck or something. Um, you know, uh, am I, you know, do, do I have things in place to make sure that my family my wife, my kids, you know, the things that I, people and uh, and charities that I care for, are taken care of uh, now, whether now or you know, in the future. So this this basically gives you that ultimate control, right? So whether you're here, you're not here, um, you know, things are, you know, in place to you know to to uh, to uh, you know make make sure that things are in place. Basically, the third one is. Uh, is what a lot of 
is a lot of what what a lot of financial institutions pay more attention to, which is how is the best way to manage my investment, which is like how Femi started, you know, my savings investment things of that nature. But the truth about the about the matter is, uh, it's a whole topic. I mean, you have a bunch of TV channels and you know, uh, um, like a whole sector dedicated to this. Uh, uh, and but the truth is, it's a big topic. And this has a lot to do with, again, where you are in life, right? How much time you have to you start needing the money. It's not necessarily retirement, uh, which I will go into it as we go along. Uh, there's a lot of retirement is a long term need, but you might need to buy a car next week, uh, next uh, couple of years from now. Uh, your kids might be five years old and you need them to go to college in 13 years. So how do you set up all those funds? For it, so so you will always have those uh, uh, short ter short term, medium term, uh, and uh, and um, uh, long term type needs. Um, usually, you know, uh, getting professional advice uh, at, at this level is usually a good idea. But the good thing is, as with the age of the internet and social media and all that good stuff, uh, there's a uh, you know there's been an uh, influx of uh, of uh, different types of funds and investment vehicles that makes, that tries to alleviate uh, the need for uh, professional advice. Uh, but the truth about the matter is, the, the, more, the more assets you have at play, uh, the more bespoke you want these things to be, right? Uh, so, the, I mean, the best way I always put it is, I, I don't go to a doctor. Um, I, I mean, if I'm sick, I go to a doctor because the doctor is a professional, right? But if I think I have malaria, I just go to the pharmacy and get me a malaria pill, right? So, so at the end of the day, it's the more the more complex a situation gets, the more that you need um, um, a professional to manage, or at least to manage your asset. But the truth about the matter is that's just one part of, uh, you know, uh, saving, you know, making sure that your tomorrow is guaranteed. Uh, there, there's a lot more. There's a lot more uh, levers that needs to be pulled in the right way to make sure that everything is aligned, right? Uh, then of course you have to deal with taxes. Again, um, you know the saying, the, the saying, the saying in, in the world in, in life is, you know, you get born, you die, you pay taxes, right? So um, the 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 for some of us, tax taxes is not mo is not much of an issue. But the truth about the matter is, it will be uh, the more successful you get, right? Uh, so, so and taxes, it's basically money that's coming out of your pocket, regardless how you how you like to spin it. So, so um, the the question is not whether you pay. So, but what you need to be doing is figure out a way to minimize minimize it legally. I'm not saying. Don't pay taxes, just figure out a way to minimize it because any savings from taxes is money that's going back into your returns. Then you have the uh, then you have the other like other ways of creating wealth. You know, always always uh, at least here in Nigeria, most people's dream is to own real estate. I view real estate the same way I view stocks or gold. I mean, uh, more gold than than than, than stocks, right? Because uh, gold is something that you can touch. Hence, the name real estate. Real, you can touch it. Uh, you know, they do different things. So it's not, I'm not saying it's bad, but you know, taking all your all your assets and throwing it into an investment that yields you sub five percent, it's not doesn't really from a from a from a conventional uh, wisdom it doesn't really uh, doesn't really make that much sense. However, uh, you know, but adding it to a group of things that you're already doing, for instance, makes a lot of sense. So there are other things that you can do uh, on, on, on how to create long term wealth. You know, for, for, for somebody that's, uh, you know, in the 20s, 30s, going back to school, getting a, getting a graduate degree, for instance, getting, you know, different certifications, uh, right? They're putting in sweat equity, uh, sweat equity right? in order to be able to get get more uh, greener pastures so that's how they create that's how they create more more wealth and then the more wealth they create the more they can save from an earlier age and the more their retirement is guaranteed so as you can see that, that everything is um that's that's no silver 
bullet on how to do everything. But the part that what makes things a lot uh, better for, what makes things a lot more uh, more uh, certain for us is if you start early uh, in doing every, most of these things, um, the better your chances are, right? Uh, you know, and then the other part, globally, you have a social welfare, whether it's a, a social security in the US or NHS in England or, you know, what the French have. Uh, here locally, uh, the way I see it is our, our source of welfare is uh, basically having your auger in, a, in, a, in, a, in a government giving you some government job that there's already 20 of the same exact rules. So they just add you there to make even the utility, the marginal utility even less than it was. So all of a sudden you have a you know a government a government uh, payroll that's highly bloated, but it's a source of welfare, right? So so but it's not it's not it's not standardized. So you can't really use that as a as a as a way to measure your retirement because in most most others other other countries that I've mentioned, uh, uh, retire you know when they retire they get some monies back from these uh, these institutions. We do not have that yet. So because we don't have that, we have to replace it with our savings uh, and you know and our retirement from for today from today, right? So so the 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 uh, the point is um, when you start early, right, you 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 have the ability to to save a lot more the older you get. So when by the time you're getting to your um, you know your mid 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 ages and towards your retirement, you are not that much under pressure. Right to start saving because the truth about the matter is the more you earn, uh, the more your expenses are. Believe it or not, because uh, you know by the time you're getting to a certain age, your kids are coming out of school. They want to go somewhere to go to college. You have to buy dollars and pounds and all that stuff to pay for school overseas. And if you if God blessed you with a lot of kids, then you have to do this over and over again. Uh, and they hope that uh, you know when they come out of school, you know. It'll help subsidize your living, which that is not guaranteed, but saving for yourself, that's guaranteed. Um, so um, that's really, th these are the, um, uh, you know, the areas uh, that most clients talk about. Now, this is for them personally, then for a, for a professional like myself, there's a lot other things that I, you know, that, that I put into consideration, right? Uh, you know, when I'm talking to anybody, it's more like, Time frame, number one, risk tolerance, which goes hand in hand with time frame, right? Number two, uh, you know where the investment is going to be, what currency is going to be, and this then determines the inflation rate of uh, of uh, of, uh, of the investment. Uh, uh, a good, a, a prime example, since we're here locally, if I'm dealing with a naira-based investment compared to a uh, a uh, USD type investment. Uh, for your for the naira based investment to match one percent of a US based investment, the naira based one has to be yielding at least thirteen percent. And the reason for that is thirteen percent is the naira inflation. The US and the rest of the world, uh, rest of the developed nations are trying to fight deflation, so they're so they're close to zero. So and in plain English, it just means. My my one dollar today is what will be worth one dollar this time next year, and then for for the uh, uh, for the naira, my one naira today will be worth about 87, 86 kubo, same time next year. So if I just take dollar and throw it on that mattress, mm -hmm. I'm already ahead, right? So 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 and 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 then we are then dealing in a country where your 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 rate of return is laced up uh, for you know your, your risk free rate of return which in this country is uh, t bills is sub five percent so in actuality for each dollar you sorry each night you put into your t bill you're actually losing eight percent but again this the i won't tell you this uh but most professionals know this right so your real your real rate of return for naira based T-bills is negative eight percent, give or take, right? So, so um, the so the, the my, my job then becomes: when are you looking to use this money? Um, you know, what are you using it for? 
um, you know, things of that, that gives us an idea. Uh, where do you plan on using it? So there's a little bit, but there's a lot more things uh, uh, that is uh, that is uh, that we have to do on the back end to be able to satisfy the needs of what the client, what we just spoke about um, uh, on the last slide. Um, so that's that's basically what our job entails. As far as investment, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of investments out there. Uh, so so uh, and and uh, we can look at the local the local um, uh, the local stock market that has a pretty high volatility compared to the rest of the world. We can look at the local euro bond market that almost has a, a positive correlation to the developed world. Uh, and then you can look at, you know, the foreign markets, which you don't have to go into individual stocks. You can you can easily just buy either an ETP on an ETF. That provides a basket of all the other stocks. Uh, so that way you so that way it helps you in mitigating uh, the uh, the non-systematic risk. So you just buy something. If you're going to buy technology, you just buy US type technology. So that way, if something has happened to one company, it doesn't affect just you uh, you uh, because you be uh, diversified. Uh, so, but those are the uh, those are the uh, that's really uh, how you help. That's how really the, the things you do to help uh, uh, secure your tomorrow. Um, I, I do know I get questions a lot. I don't want to take any risk. I want all the returns. Um, I get that quite a bit. Uh, and the truth about the matter is, um, there's nothing like that, right? So, so, so for I mean, you coming to work today, you took some risk. Um, you got in a car, you drove, and you know, anything could have happened to any of us. So, so uh, it's just that the more the more calculated risk you're willing to take. The, uh, the potential return you can get from it. Um, you putting your money uh, under a mattress is a risk. You could get robbed the next day, right? So, so there's, there's anything you do in life is calculated, whether you know it or not. Uh, the, our jobs as uh, wealth professionals and your job uh, as, a, as, a, as a saver for tomorrow is understanding this and then, and then trying to put uh, mitigants in place to to be, to 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 at least make sure that a lot of these risks uh, that you're taking are mitigated and nothing nothing uh, surprises you. Um, I I had a couple of examples of uh, uh, the benefits of compound interest. Uh, I I before I show it, I have to be clear on compound interest. So so it's just based. It's, well, all it is in simple English is is interest earned on interest. But for that to happen, there's a lot of things. It's not dramatic, right? So if you look at, uh, if I look at, uh, say, the Dow Jones or the uh, NSE, right? Um, if you look at it over the long term, they, they, they're positive, right? So so if you look at the, uh, the chart, the chart is going up. However, if you take a closer look and look at it like on a five month, one year, one week, uh, uh, one week uh, um, performance, you notice that it's a lot more zigzag, which is what I was explaining before. It's the story of life, right? Um, the, 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 so for, for compound interest to work for you, right, you have to be able to be willing to, you know, make the right investment and hold it over the long term. Right. If it's not, if you're not going to hold it over the long term, there might as well be simple interest, which is just one, one, uh, uh, you know, one interest, and be done with it. Right. So, so, so a simple example of of, of uh, compounded interest is your fixed deposit. When it pays out your interest, you take the interest, you re, you reinvest everything. Right. It keeps. So the the amount of time you reinvest it is the amount of time it compounds in one year. So a good, a good that one. Is, so if you're doing a 90-day fixed deposit, and after 90 days, you know you get your interest and uh, your principal. You take both of them, put it back. It does the same thing about 90 days. So in one year, all that means is your your money has compounded four times. So if your if your interest rate was about nine percent, your real return will be about nine point two, nine point three percent for that year. So when you start doing it over, over, if you, when you start doing it uh, over the uh, over the long term, you you end up making um, 
you know, your 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 returns ends up being a lot more than it should. So 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 that's uh, I just I just thought I should mention that. Um, so I have a couple of pages here that uh, a couple of slides here that just gives a gives a you know like a, br a brief um, demonstration of this, an investment that starts that you put ten thousand naira a month for twenty years, comp uh, at, and you started with zero and you're doing ten thousand a month for twenty years, uh, and then compared to the one that you do at ten years, if you look at the difference, it's not actually it's not two x. It's actually more like 3.2x, right? So, so as the as the as the amount in play begins to you know balloon, the uh, the um, uh, exponent be begins to be even higher higher than it should. So, so uh, the first one was for 20 uh, for 10 years. Uh, the second one was for 20 years. So, if you look at the amount, it's almost 300% of the first one. So, this just Talks. This just gives you like a visual, um, a, a visual uh, aspect of why you should start early, so that way by the time you're getting towards that retirement part, um, um, you'd have saved enough. And uh, you know, I'm not oblivious to to the, um, you know, to the reasons why why savings is usually, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to start early. You know, usually you have, uh, you know, debt, you know, school debt. Uh, if you want to get married, buy a big house, or you want to rent, you want to move to Lucky Phase One, uh, want to get married, want to buy a nice car, blah blah blah. There, that, there's a lot of uh, uh, reasons of why you need, you know, to spend. The truth about the matter is, if you don't start, right? If you don't plan and don't start, then you wouldn't know what you could have done with the with the, even the smallest amount. Right, so the plan, the, the 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 trick is to start and then build on it, and then it's a mentality, right? You, you you build on it and then and then try your best to live below your means. I can't stress that. I can't stress that. Uh, I can't stress that more. Um, yeah, at least in this in this city that I live in, it it I see I see a lot of this on a daily basis. All right, so 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 um, of people flaunting this rule. And then you find out that everybody's living, you know, paycheck to paycheck, and that's not that's not um, just not the way to do it. Um, well, with that, I will well, I'll ask, I'll add a couple more things. You know, the whole idea of uh, being healthy. You know, so being healthy, working out, eating right, uh, and you know, keeping your mind right. Uh, I can't stress, I can't stress that. Uh, more than I have already, but you can go bankrupt easily by having one or two health crises. Uh, the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, killer of black men in the world is something that we cause on ourselves: diabetes. You, you know, you, 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 you make a little bit of money. We go to the bar and we completely get drunk, and um, you know. The next day we don't work out, we don't do anything, we don't drink any water, and we think we're living a good life. Uh, and your body is actually fighting. You put in your body, your body in complete fight mode for 20, 30 years, and then you wonder why at 50, uh, when you sh you're supposed to start enjoying the fruit of your labor, you're sick. Uh, um, you know the the. You know, having a having a good regimen, going to your medical, going to uh, uh, medical checkups and things of that nature, and actually just living a decent, uh, a decent, uh, you know, uh, uh, helpful type life helps a lot. Because so, so in that case, we consider good health an asset, right? So, um, and and then you know, uh, you know, the, the healthier you are, the less money you spend in hospitals. And, and um, you, you and I all know that uh, hospitals are pretty expensive, especially when it gets very serious. I have to fly abroad and things of that nature. It's, it's really, really expensive. I mean, last last year, for instance, we spent Nigeria as a country spent well over a billion dollars on medical tourism. That's a billion dollars that could have stayed here. Imagine how imagine what half of it would have done to our GDP last year. 
So that's 300, that's about 462 billion, uh, that's 5% of the entire budget. Actually, what am I saying? It's more like 10% of the entire Nigerian budget was spent on medical tourism just last year. So, so and, and a lot of these are self-inflicted, right? Um, um, the, so if we, and it, it, where, when I'm seeing that the country is beginning to move in that direction, uh, uh, so the hope is that we keep it up and then keep the money here. Um, with that, I'll take, uh, that's all I have for everybody today and uh, we'll be glad to take any questions. Thank you so much, Victor. Uh, it's, it's been an educating one. Um, there are so many things that are packed into this uh, and it looks that the time is so, so short. But um, there, there is a part I'd like you to take um, over again and it's, it's the this benefit of starting early. You you did a computation, um, what investment by um, balance by year with eight percent compound interest. Can you take us through it so that um, the people listening to us also can have an understanding um, step by step as to how this this goes by and what they can earn based on their investment? Yeah, we are talking about benefit of starting early. Can we reiterate again why we we expect that? Those listening to us, we also drop their questions and then we can turn the conversation further. Thank you. Uh, uh, sure, 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 Femi. Um, so on the on these investments, uh, I, I made I made a couple of um, assumptions, i.e. it compounds twice. The example I made initially uh, where with the fixed deposit was, was one that compounds four times. So this this is think of it as an investment where I put it January 1st. We do an investment, uh, 180 day uh, fixed deposit that matures uh, June 31st, right? And then July 1st, we take both the interest and the uh, and the principal and fix it again, and that one matures June, uh, sorry, December 31st. So it's compounded on twice, right? So that's the basic example. Okay. That we, that's the that's the basic example that we gave here. Um, uh, and this is done over 10 years. So every year you're doing, uh, yeah, every year you put, uh, sorry, every month, you're depositing 10,000 naira monthly, right? So, so technically every, every year you are doing, you are uh, depositing an additional 120,000 naira. So you, you remember you started mm -hmm. from zero. Mm -hmm. So you didn't, it's not like you had any amount, you didn't have anything to start with. You started from zero. Hence that whole idea of starting early, and then you kept doing this. So imagine if you started from when you get a job, your first job uh, at 23, and then you keep doing this 10, 10,000 naira, right? Uh, um, for and 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 then at age 43, how much would you have December 31st of that age? That's what this. That's what this is. Uh, so uh, so the question is, well, how much would I have at 33? How much would I have at 43, right? So, so and you look at the difference at 33, you will have about 1.8 million naira. So, so, uh, uh, so the amount that you actually put in, the actual, uh, the actual contribution you made is 1.2 million, the 10,000 10, naira uh, per month. Then the uh, the growth on it is about 600,000, so about 50% growth on it. Uh, and then on the other one, so if you continue doing it uh, for for um, for another 10 years, what you would have is about 5.7 million, right? So, but if you look at it, the amount of uh, the, the, the your contribution is, will be at about 2.4 million, but the actual, uh, your, um, your alpha or the difference is, about three million, uh, three point three million, which is well over one hundred percent. So the growth on your money is actually more than what you put in. Mm. That's the effect of uh, that, that that compound uh, uh, interest. And the, the the more time you put in, the, mm -hmm. the more this exponent this exponent goes uh, continues, right? And and the truth the truth about the matter is, you know, I just did it as straight line. But the thing is, as you get promoted, you, you, you move you move forward in life and things of that nature. The uh, the uh, underlying assumption is that your contribution level should, you know, somewhat match it. 
you know, a good example that we use for here that that uh, that, that is uh, used institutionally is your pension fund. The mm -hmm. more they give you a higher, uh, they give you a higher. If you get a, if you get like a, what do you call it? If you get like a promotion, the amount yes. that you put in for your uh, the 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 amount that you put in for your pension uh, gets increased also. Do you understand? So, and, and it's because uh, the amount that you're putting in is supposed to be a percentage of your income, right? But in this case, I, uh, I, we're trying to illustrate starting early, right? But uh, but in a real life scenario, I don't anticipate somebody doing 10,000 for 20 years, uh, uh, unless the person did not, you know, uh, you know, the person either did not do much in life or uh he, he has something else added to this already so he has this one going as a separate fund and then he has something mm -hmm. else which is usually the case right but the uh the the point of this whole thing is um the the earlier you start mm -hmm. the more you have uh, at, uh towards the end because of the effect of compound interest mm -hmm. thank you so much for that so um we have some questions here and Imano would like to know that uh, First of all, he's thanking you for your time. And he says that for early starter, how does an investor um, match his or appetite, risk appetite with investment, taste, and portfolio firsthand before you approach an investment professional? Are we able to manage yours before going ahead to meet a professional? Well, yeah, it's, it's a good question, right? Um, the, 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 a, lot of, a lot of resources are online uh, to start with. Uh, and there, there are a lot of investments that are that are designed for the retail investor, uh, and 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 those investments are usually kind of a uh, like a time timed type of investment. Um, and if I, if I use the mutual fund for example, I mean they, there's a bunch of uh, fund of funds that you call life cycle type funds. Uh, I e uh, the funds usually have a date uh, or a time frame at the end of it. Uh, and it doesn't mean that when that time comes, the fund ends. It just means the closer you get to that fund, the, the fund date, the more conservative the fund is. So so, so the, the further away you are from your retirement, the more aggressive the fund will be. Uh, and all I mean by uh, the aggressiveness is, uh, you, you know, the, the funds will probably have a lot of uh, high vol type uh, stocks, high volatility stocks or high beta stocks. Uh, so small caps, uh, so uh, smaller companies. Sorry, I don't want to be using too much of these financial terms, but uh, you know smaller companies, uh, which in good economic times they go way up, and bad economic times they go way down, right? Then you don't have the bigger companies. The let me pick uh, in Nigeria, pick like a GT for instance, is a big company, right? They don't move very much, right? Uh, as far as their stock, their stocks, their stock range is usually pretty tight. Compared to like a new company that's uh, that's, that's moving way up, so so uh, what happens is, um, you know, putting money in those type of funds for now, right? And and then and then keep saving that when you get to a certain point, and and the the point is relative for different people, right? Um, uh, uh, for conventional guys, uh, by the time you're getting to like your late thirties, early forties, right? Uh, that you your your um your needs are different by that time most likely you already have a family you have kids uh looking to uh you know get a bigger bigger place you have uh, basically expenses and your needs are completely different from when you're 25. Right? So, so at that point there are a lot of things that uh, that's when you start needing like uh, some kind of professional help uh you know making sure you have a will in place uh making sure that uh um you know you have you have uh, like a good tax consultant you know things of that nature you have them uh, uh even on the investment side at that point you don't necessarily need a professional to be told you could still manage your assets and the way you and again yes resources uh, uh, uh for this however um, you know, you, sh you would at that time know that your risk tolerance is most likely moderate um, um, because you have different needs. You know, your short term need might be to buy a car, just like I had um, the, uh, the slide that I had here. 
a short term need might be okay. My car is getting old. Let me save to buy a new car next 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 six months to a year. Uh, you need to have an emergency fund, right? Just in case something happens, uh, you know, uh, you know, in Nigeria, for you to go into any hospital, they'll tell you to bring one million naira or something down. You know, you, that emergency fund needs to be somewhere readily available. Uh, you know, your kids are starting school uh, in ten years, and and, uh, and you want them to go to school in the U.S. Well, U.S. school infl uh, college inflation is eight percent in dollars. So if your school fees is, if you do the analysis today, if your school fees now is say ten thousand dollars, in about uh, in about eight years to ten years, it will be more than have doubled. So so these are these are uh, um, so the, to answer your question directly, when you are starting out in your twenties, you don't really need that much of a professional. There's a lot of online resources out there just it on what to do on the basics. But as you move uh, as you move forward in life. Uh, 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 those changes. Now, remember what I said. This is for this is for like the conventional way of earnings. There's a group mm -hmm. of other. There's another group of people, even though they're very minimal, but they're there. That their 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 earnings actually go down the older they get, right? And those are the uh, celebrities. I call them the Benjamin Buttons of earnings, right? So the younger they are, the stronger they are, the more they earn. Right, so the soccer players, the musicians, you know, the entertainers, all that. Uh, as as they get older, right, their earning potential goes away. So it's the is is the opposite of a regular earner. So so what we would have done for somebody at uh, at 50, 60 is what we'll be doing for them now. The job for them is a little bit harder because you have to. Uh, for starters, when you are dealing with um, somebody that's 60, 70, they've been through life, they've seen a lot. So it's it's somewhat easier to have a, to have a conversation with them, right? Because a lot of things that you will be telling you, will be uh, a lot of conversations that you'll be having with these guys, uh, uh, to an extent, they've either seen it or had a friend that's been through it and all that. However, uh, for, for a 20 year old that just made $10 million, it's difficult to tell them uh, not to spend 9.9 .9 million of it and buying a Bugatti, right? So, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, or you know, putting on, on on Instagram and saving a good portion of it, uh, and because and then the other part is you have to make sure that those money will last last, you know, uh, 50 to uh, 50 to 80 years as compared to somebody that is, is retiring at 60 and then money need the money to last 20 years. So, mm -hmm. so that's part of our jobs, uh, our job too, but I just, you know, just needed to put that out there. Yeah. That yeah. question. Thank you so much. Um, Antonio wants to know that as, as an investor, there are so many risks you are edging against. And the one that wants to, that is prominent is the inflation risk. So he it wants to know that as an investor, how do you edge against inflation risk, knowing that, the, that we have um, currency volatility? Say that how do you ensure that your interest rate and your compound sum will not be a negative at the end of your investment, which will further reduces your purchasing power? How do you do that as an investor? Well, that's a tough one, but uh, it's a good question, by the way. Um, so dep it depends. Uh, so the the way you the way you uh, deal with the local based investments um, uh, in Naira. To hedge on inflation just means that you have to get investment that yields higher than inflation. Simple. So, so well, I say simple. It's not that simple because uh, a lot of times those type of investments are not readily available to the retail investor. But they're there. You just have to look a little bit more. So it's not ubiquitous like a like a uh, um, a T bill type of um, investment. Right, so so so, but there are investments that yield. Uh, there are investments that yield, uh, you know, uh, over that have alpha over over inflation. That's one. The other one is to look for investments where the holdings on the investments are usually not a local currency. Also, they're there. So I can't go in and start advertising mm -hmm. investments out there, but they're there. Absolutely. Uh, 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 so that helps you. So if you look at it, so if it's give, if something is paying you one and a half percent in USD, just giving give, give an example. 
is better than 13% and higher, right? So, mm. so, so that gives you that yield on uh, that inflation, inflation uh, uh, protection, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. Uh, you right, right. You yeah. Right. So that's that's how that's how you do it. And if you must uh, do something in local currency, then uh, investments in uh, in uh, uh, um, uh, and assets yielding over 13%, for instance, is a good way to go. Now, keep in mind is that um, inflation is not always 13%. It's just that it's 13% at this very uh, moment. And this is one of the few times where uh, the, 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 the uh, delta or the difference between your risk-free rate and uh, your inflation is so high. It's, this is not usually the norm, right? So, so, so the hope is that uh, you know our, our you know our regulators and all that to somehow uh, you know get to a point where mm -hmm. that it, it it goes back it closes the 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 delta gap closes, yes. but for now uh, it's just you know it's pretty it's pretty high, and if you if you must if you if you're going to invest um, you know you know look for ones that are higher than inflation one, uh, or but keep in mind that the higher the higher you look for the riskier it is. Mm -hmm. I have to mess up. So the higher you look for the the, the risk it is, if you're looking for the risk free rate, it will be it will be the risk free rate will be will be on a on a on a real return basis lower than inflation for now. Okay, so moving on, if can we not say to edge against inflation risk, would you advise that um, an investor do a short term investment and start rolling it over based on the prevailing market rate? Ah uh, yes, so, so, so uh, there's no point uh, uh, locking your fund over long term in a in a in a, in a real um, in a negative real uh, interest rate environment, right? Uh, that's there's there's no point unless, like I said, you are you 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 have something that is yielding you higher than much higher than inflation, then 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 it would you know it would make some financial sense. So, uh, you know, basically having 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 short term having short term uh, investments and, and you know and, and keeping and continue to roll it over gives you that compound that additional compound uh, compound effect, and then hopefully the plan the hope is as things as as we move along, uh, you know, regulations uh, and and, uh, and policies are put in place to help reduce the uh, reduced inflation. Keep in mind, inflation is up for a, a number of reasons. That's a whole different topic, by the way. But it's that's a bunch of other reasons. Inflation is up, you know, border being closed. Some guys killing a bunch of people in the middle belt. And uh, because a lot of the inflation is a is a is a, is a, is a matter of uh, your CPI, your consumer price index being higher than the base rate. And what makes up the consumer uh, price index, a lot of times, is the food basket, and as food goes up, inflation would go up. So, uh, uh, you know, there's a going joke of uh, 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 onions being so high now that you can't exactly. even can't even get it to see it anymore. Exactly. So, so that tells you that inflation is actually creeping up because that this, mm. these are staples that uh, that make up the inflation basket. So, so, uh, but that's a different topic for a, a different day. Uh, um, but as things begin to normalize, hopefully stabilize, and this whole NSARS thing is, you know, is going to the dustbin of uh, history. Uh, the, uh, you know, the hope is that the inflation begins to become sub 10 percent, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and, then, uh, and then at that point, you know, you can, you can, you can, your investment that was already yielding higher than inflation at the point does be a much higher real uh, return. Mm. Okay. Th um, thank you so much. Um, on a lighter note, someone once said um, jokingly that um, tell me how rich you are, and the person responded, "Say I still put indomie. I mean, I still put onions in my indomie. That's how rich I am." <laughs> and uh, someone said again, someone was sharing his experience. The person invested in an aggressive growth fund over a decade. The, the promised um, return was huge, but it could not pull out the fund because the caveat was was inserted into the contract that, until a particular window. And when it got to that window, 
his investment had crashed almost to nothing. That in fact, it could not get up to what he had put in. This for that, um, for that support your line of thought that you shared with us initially to roll out um, short-term investment. But someone is asking about a lifestyle change. He's asking that, how, how do you live below your means effectively? Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very loaded subjective question. However, I'll tell you how I do mine. I mean, it's, 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 you know what you, you know what you're, what you make per uh, per month annually you have an idea uh, uh, and and if you can right um, make sure that your annual sorry your monthly out uh, outlay is you know five or ten percent lower than what you're bringing in you are lo you are living below uh, uh, your your you know you're living below your means and it doesn't it doesn't really mean it doesn't really mean that um, you have to go and move to like uh, Ecuador or something. Doesn't mean that, because you know my my take on my take on this is, um, at the end of the day, wealth is all besides the financial part is also a state of mind, right? Uh, I remember talking talking about your health. Um, I, I instead of me living in a ten bedroom house in Ecuador like a king, I could live in a studio in Lekki, right? but my ride to the office is five minutes compared to four hours each way right so the, so these are choices that you make as a family as a person depending on how young you are or as a family right but the point the point of the matter is you know is a, is a choice you make and then and then and then you roll with it so as as you then begin to get your promotions at work or you start a new business or things of that nature, you begin to get you can begin to get a little bit more income. Uh, you can then go from your studio apartment uh, to you know like a one bedroom apartment, right? And then you you continue that way. But what you see here, uh, uh, what I see here is uh, uh, people that you know you are making ten thousand a month. You spend nine nine thousand nine hundred. Then the company that you are working for goes into some kind of uh, hardship. And then they cut your salary by, or they cut salaries of everybody in the office by 10%. Now, you are now in the deficit 900 naira per month. So, I, and what you do is instead of reducing your expenses, that you go, you go and go to a pay shark or a loan shark person and borrow 900 naira. Now you go into that debt spiral. So by the time they even you know uh, the company comes out of the uh, funk that it is, and then you know uh, we stay salaries, you already you already in debt. If even that doesn't bring you out of the debt, so you now go into that spiral. This is what happens. So so well, uh, you know so. But if you if you were spending eight thousand at the point at that time, and you were saving a lot of it, that savings could have helped alleviate a lot of the problems that you went to a loan shark for. So, so it's, it's, it's one of those, uh, that's how, you know, uh, this is on the person, my own personal experience uh, on how uh, mm. the people I've spoken to, uh, on how, yeah. on how they live, they live at their means, right? And living at your means, living on the margin is generally a bad idea, right? Because anything can happen, right? So, so, so the whole idea is living well below your margin and then, and then that slack, right, is what you use for your emergency fund and things of that nature. Th thank you so much. So someone wants to know if uh, Heritage Bank has, do, do we have products that can assist uh, our customers to save so that they can start earlier? So do we have um, products like that? Yeah, definitely. We have, uh, we have, uh, we have a lot of uh, products like that actually. We, some of them we cause you know the name heritage, so we have uh, local names for these accounts. That's one called the Susu, uh, uh, um, which I think is Susu means savings in Europe, I believe. But uh, um, um, we do have quite a few of those uh, uh, savings product uh, for for retail investors, uh, uh, um, and you know their their interests are usually generally higher than you know your regular uh, call or uh, checking or savings account, but we do have quite a bit of those, yes. Okay, so um, someone is asking that you talk 
talked about exchange traded funds. Now, how does one invest in ETF like gold, for example, are there non legitimate channels to approach such investments? Yes, uh, they, they are. Uh, um, um, they're, 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 they're local, local uh, uh, electronic uh, portals where you can, you, you can, you can uh, trade different commodity funds. Um, so, so if I pick gold, for example, uh, you know, gold has made a big news in Nigeria. What I don't understand is why it's just making news just now. It's been around for hundreds of years, um, and gold around uh, once counteractive to the U.S. dollar, right? Uh, so, so gold is worth uh, is basically a store of wealth to uh, if you are trying to reduce your volatility. So during during the Trump era, uh, well, Trump is still around, but you know he's on his way out. But during his heydays, gold was has been going crazy up, right? So so at least when Obama left the office, gold was around eleven hundred dollars, right? So but now it's a, it, it may peak around twenty two thousand thirty five dollars, but it's now back down to about past uh, you know circa eighteen hundred. The 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 whole idea is. When there's a when there's a lot of volatility in the market, yeah, uh, a lot of people will pull their money, and then they will usually put it in a in where they where they consider it a safe haven, usually the U.S. Treasury or gold. So U.S. Treasury and gold go hand in hand, right? They have a positive uh, correlation. Um, 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 so and it, well, the positive correlation is not one, so it's not that it's not directly one to one. But to answer your question, because it seems like I was deviating, you could there are, there are places you could buy uh, um, uh, um, ETFs and ETPs here locally. Uh, there are companies out there that 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 actually do it, and they're legit. Uh, so yeah, so your you know what you can research them online actually. But what you can do is to even figure out which which fund to get into or which ETF to get into. Because remember, all these ETFs they trade, you know, they trade like stocks. So, so, so they could either go through Euroclear, uh, you know, the the the, the uh, was it called? the S and P for not S and P, uh, the Dow Jones, or the OTC market. So, so you could you could you could do that from here. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't trust the information out there about what is safe to invest in. Where do we read about that? Where do we read about them? Um, a lot of information is available for overseas investment, but the conversion rate for um, USD and the British pound makes it difficult to project and invest. I mean, and to project the income. I mean, the return on investment. So there are two questions now. Where do we read about this investment, which makes it difficult? to calculate your um, investment return? Um, there, are, there, are various, there are various websites. I can, the, the basic one is you just go to yahoofinance.com, it's, it's there. Uh, so, so that's that for starters. Now, now, the, now the, the other thing to, to, to remember is that um, the, the, exchange, the exchange rate only comes into play when you are going from the local currency to the foreign currency. Once it's in the foreign currency, it's there already, right? The but what and what you get in Yahoo, for instance, will only talk to you about investment in dollars, or maybe in GBP, right? So so the exchange rate is solely your responsibility as a local investor. But there are, there are, there, are, there are different sites. I mean, you have a Prusia, Nigeria.com, and uh, all these are just information information sites where you can, you know, where you can, uh, uh, you know, look up information on what's happening locally. Um, the, the, when you are doing your analysis on uh, on an investment, right? You know, is good. They're they 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 analysts. Depending on how big the company is, there are different analysts that have different opinions of on a company. So there's usually what you would call a buy, sell, overweight, underweight. Uh, and these are these are all the analysts giving the opinions on the company. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you are going to buy a stock, right, for instance, that means you are dealing with one company, uh, you have to understand that the the systematic risk 
uh, uh, sorry, the non-systematic risk on that on that on that account is uh, on that stock is much higher. I.e., anything can happen to that company, not necessarily the country, right? So, so which means there's a lot more risk to it. But if you're going to buy, like, say, a mutual fund that invests in that sector, um, it helps. It helps in uh, removing, uh, at least reducing, the uh, the non-systematic risk. A good example would be, let me pick a big company that everybody probably knows about, GE. If you look at General Electric uh, this year, for instance, their return is not as good as the market in general. So if you invested in General Electric, you probably would have lost money this year in a market that is doing very, very, very well, right? So so, so these are the things that you have to uh, uh, um, you know, be cognizant about. So the, most of the big global firms out there, um, uh, sorry, uh, go, yeah, global firms out there, their analysis is is readily available. They have to file 10 Qs on uh, an H1 um, uh, report by uh, by law. So so all those reports are used by analysts and then they look at how what, the economy, how they do business and all that to give you their, their own analysis, right? Uh, uh, it's uh, And that's how they, they make their decision on whether you should buy or hold, but that's their own analysis. And depending on how big the company is, you will have a lot of analysts doing analysis and everybody will give you their own opinion. Then you would then make your decision uh, as an investor whether you should go in or not go in. But if you do not want that, if you don't want to be put in a situation or in a position to make that decision, then you just give the money to a retail professional manager by means of buying a mutual fund. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't want to, if you don't want to pay the fee, then just buy an ETF. That's it. So um, I'd like to take two comments. One is an observation, and the other is a question. Um, someone said that he or she has observed over the years that small business is the all mark for national growth. Um, do, you, do you also support the school of thought? And then there is another question. In a situation where you find yourself spending from your savings, what should you do to cope that? Well, um, first question, um, yes. Um, the uh, small business is the hallmark of any economy, not just ours. It's just that in ours is a uh, is a lot uh, more profound. Um, truth about the matter is, we get ninety percent of our foreign income from selling selling one commodity, but that one commodity is less than nine percent of our uh, um, our GDP, our annual income. About eighty five percent of uh, the entire com country's um, GDP is based on small businesses. Uh, all I think seventeen million, all seventeen million of them. So, 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 so it's, 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 uh, you need small businesses to succeed, right? And, and the more the small businesses succeed, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of ripple effect. As small businesses su succeed, they become medium term and medium sized businesses and eventually large businesses. Uh, I mean, pick a company, uh, 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 Yahoo, Google, all this company. They were small businesses uh, once upon a time, and they became big businesses. And as they become big businesses, uh, uh, the, um, the, there's a lot more finances that come into it via banks and, and things of that nature, and eventually goes into the capital market, right? And then that's how the uh, the, the, the savers and uh, the retirees get into it. And then, and then, in their process of becoming, you know, medium-sized to big-size, uh, uh, large-sized businesses, they hire more people. So the ripple effect is, is uh, the ripple effect is uh, actually a big deal. Uh, the the my, my take on it, at least in the uh, in, uh, in, uh, locally, is uh, there was a myth. That, uh, be, uh, that small businesses, uh, you know, the middle class is growing, 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 growing. Uh, yeah, the myth was busted after 2015, and yeah, it's not it's not growing as we wished. Uh, and, and I have my theories on why that is the case, mm -hmm. but the but the the, the 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 point is 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 hopefully as we move along that the middle class. Will, will hopefully 
pick back up. But for the middle, middle class to pick back up, small and medium sized enterprises uh, uh, have to uh, have to uh, um, you know they have to pick up, right? So so because mm -hmm. if 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 it's, if it's not if the if those industries don't pick up and and that's the mom and pops that we all use. Right. Um, you know, right. you're going to go and buy, uh, you know, uh, Ashwood B at the market, right? So is that, that's, a, that's, that's a small business. Um, you know, the mechanic shop, all those things. Uh, you know, if you're building a house, somebody wells a gate, somebody does the windows, all these are all small businesses, mm -hmm. right? So if the economy is not, uh, uh, it's not uh, booming in real, in real, in real terms, if they're not booming in real terms, then, then you, you are going to have problems with those small businesses, and right. those are the right. and those are the businesses that actually uh, do most of the uh, employment. I mean, if you look at between the oil industry and the, and the banking industry that everybody raves about, it's less than a million employees mm. in the country. I might say a million, half a million. Meanwhile, you have a you have a we have a wide total workforce of well over fifty million. So you begin to you begin to see the disparity. But I hope that answers your question. Yes, uh, thank you very much. So we, because of the time, we have to close the Q&A session. Uh, we know that we, we are, have so many questions to ask, but we can also keep on taking this conversation for that. You can reach us at Heritage Bank, just walk into any of our ECs, ask your question, make your findings, and you are promised that your your Questions will be answered from there, which will be channeled to the right department to help you handle it. So, so the last two questions that we have, I like that we take it together. Uh, the first one is how does the bank, Heritage Bank, plan to boost investment by supporting startups? So we're talking about startups again. How we plan to support them? And also, how do we plan or how do somebody, an investor, how do you man minimize your tax? Ah, is there a way to minimize your tax? That probably is asked that way. Well, there's always a uh, there's always a way to minimize your taxes. Um, the first of first is knowing what your taxes are. That's for starters. Uh, secondly, is uh, if is an employee, if it's an employee, uh, they call it W two when the US is called W two. But if it's an employee tax, it's a lot more difficult. But if it's a business tax, then it, then you know. Uh, you, you, you don't get taxed on revenue, you get taxed on profit, right? So so um, the before before between the top line, which is revenue and profit, there's a lot of things in between, right? Uh, you have a lot of expenses, they have things of that nature uh, that, that can potentially reduce your taxes. What I would say is, uh, cause I can't, you know, I can't go and start giving tax advices on things of that nature. Consult a professional, but there are ways to do it. There are ways. I mean, uh, it's been it's been uh, it's been it's been practiced for tens of years. But there, there are ways to reduce it. Uh, and just keep in mind, nobody will tax you on, uh, on on revenue. They will only tax you on profit that you make from that revenue. And in between those uh, those lines in your income statement, there's a lot of lines. That's all I'll say to that. Uh, the, on the other question. On how can heritage help? Things like gold, for instance. I mean, we uh, heritage. Uh, we, we try to be in the forefront of all, you know, these types of investments. Uh, we partnered with Duke Air Gold, for instance, locally, where you could actually go in and uh, actually buy uh, gold bullions in actual USD, believe it or not. Uh, so, so that helps with the store of wealth. So we we look for ways to um, to make investing. Uh, for the common uh, man and the non-common man, uh, easier. Uh, the Dukia, Dukia Gold, D-U-K-I-A, is just one uh, example. Uh, we do have, like I said, we do have various types of accounts uh, that we could, uh, that the clients can open um, to to help them with different types of our savings need. Uh, we also have, I mean, you have us here in, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, you know, financial planning group that we could, we could help when, when the situation is right. We can always help uh, uh, the client uh, in uh, you know, coming up with a financial plan and sticking to it. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Victor, for, for your time. Um, uh, we we are out of time and it's, it's, we'll just close the session. Uh, it's been an engaging one and I am sure that uh, we have all learned one thing or the other. It is, it is safe to say that um, investing and securing your future, especially through investment, it cannot be overemphasized, over especially in fora like this. So now that we have set the ball rolling and we have we are we are upping the ante tomorrow. Please join us same time again tomorrow as we discuss um, on the topic your health and why it is a big deal. You know that many have erroneously believed that as men you need to put up this strong face and you should refrain from sharing how you feel and especially if you even refrain from saying you are sick or something like that because people will believe that you are just being weak but it is it is a wrong mindset um, tomorrow we'll see why your health is a big deal and just as benjamin graham said uh, successful investment is about managing risk and not avoiding it so tomorrow we'll change the topic again we'll change the conversation to talking about your health as they say, health is wealth. So we ask you that you continue to keep safe. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Thank you, Victor, for your time. And thank you, thank you. for listening in as well. Thank you to everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. From us at Heritage Bank, stay safe and see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you.